Historically, the way that obstetricians calculate when a baby is due is based on the last menstrual period. And it might sound confusing because we usually think of the typical nine months of pregnancy, but we actually calculate that a due date is 40 weeks after the last menstrual period. And that's kind of confusing to patients because it seems like a pregnancy maybe is supposed to be 10 months then instead of nine, but actually the first two weeks are even prior to when a patient's ovulated. So technically a term pregnancy is one that occurs at 37 weeks or beyond. And once you get to 42 weeks of pregnancy, that's called a post-term pregnancy. And there are a unique set of complications that are associated with pregnancies that go too far past the due date as well. But what we've now recognized over the last several decades is that within that group of infants born between that term gestational period, between 37 weeks and 40 weeks, there's a wide spectrum of outcomes. And babies that are born in the early term period, which is defined as being 37 weeks to 38 and 6 sevenths weeks, have more complications than babies born at 39 weeks or later. Well, there are complications for both the newborn as well as for mom. So some of the complications that we see are both an increase in morbidity, so problems like respiratory difficulties, feeding difficulties, an increased risk of having problems potentially like cerebral palsy, even though the overall risks are very low, they're higher compared to babies that are born at 39 weeks or later. Um, there's also an increased risk of mortality overall for infants that are born in that early term rather than late term gestation. Um, the mothers have an increased risk of complications as well. For example, if you're inducing a pregnancy, so that's where you are trying to give medications or do procedures that get a woman who's not already in labor into labor, there's an increased risk of needing a C-section, for example. And long term, the consequences of having multiple C-sections in a row can make more complicated surgeries, more blood loss, problems in the future for where the placenta attaches, and that ultimately can be um, difficult surgically for the mother. There's also an increased risk of having a long labor if you have to induce a labor in a woman whose uterus isn't ready to deliver. And so that can lead to complications like an increased need to do something like a forceps assisted delivery or even having too much bleeding after delivery, having a postpartum hemorrhage and requiring a blood transfusion. So it's not a benign procedure entirely that we're talking about. Yeah. I think to me one of the things that was the most surprising about the whole study is um, uh, one of the pieces that we, one of the, one of the research studies that we looked at to get information about the study actually polled recently delivered women. So they asked 650 women who'd had a recent pregnancy, when do you think it's safe to deliver a baby? And over half of the women said at 37 or 38 weeks, and then 25% of the women actually thought it was safe to deliver your baby at 34 to 36 weeks. So I think there's a huge need to have patient awareness and uh, increased public perception of actually what is a term pregnancy. One of the things that's being done is public awareness campaigns to let patients know that there are risks associated with this. And insurers and quality academies are also taking a hard look at this practice. And um, what we're seeing now is the first wave which will, of things that will likely continue of where some companies are refusing to pay for uh, pregnancies that are electively induced in this early term without a solid medical indication. And so one thing that's been looked at is something that's called a hard stop policy. So there's an oversight committee that may be made of nurses or other physicians, and um, it's a firm policy that without a true medical indication, no elective induction can be initiated at the hospital at all before 39 completed weeks of pregnancy. This isn't a new idea either. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or ACOG, one of our biggest governing organizations, has said for nearly three decades that we need to stop delivering babies in this elective early term um, period. I think one thing ACOG could do is come out with some uh, very strong committee opinions or pieces that they could distribute more widely to uh, obstetricians to let them know about these risks associated with the practice.